Where have all the good men gone? And where are all the gods? Where's the streetwise Hercules to fight against the odds? Isn't there a white knight upon a fiery steed? <laughs> Late at night I toss and I turn, and I dream of what I need. I need a hero. I'm holding out for a hero till the end of the night. <laughs> he's got to be strong. <laughs> he's got to be fast. <laughs> and he's got to be fresh from a fight. I need a hero. I'm holding out for a hero till the morning light. Oh, he's got to be sure. <laughs> he's, he's got to be soon. I've got to be larger than life. Larger than life. I need a hero. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great Player. My name is Guy and today we're talking about Are You a Hero? Now what do we mean by Are You a Hero versus what? Well, the alternative at a gaming table between a hero player and a not hero player is the not hero player would be called a sidekick. We're going to look at that next week. So if you think you're a sidekick, you can still watch hero video because you can become a hero. If you are a hero, you should be watching this video to make sure that you're not the wrong type of hero. So what do we mean by hero? What are, what are the signs that you might be a hero player rather than a sidekick player? Well, let's have a look. Let's see what we've got here. So the signs. The signs, the signs, the signs of are you a hero? Center of attention. This is not a bad thing. A lot of people think, oh, center of attention, bad, 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 bad. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you wanting your character to be in the centre of attention, in the centre of the action, to be always involved. Now, there is a line, of course, and we're going to look at that later on, but if your character likes to be in the limelight, if you like to see your character doing stuff, now they might be being beaten up, they might be beating up, they might be just generally going about their business but as long as their business is at the forefront then you as a player are happy if you have set down that your character is a blacksmith and there are moments within the role-playing session where blacksmithing happens and your character shines that's brilliant you are happy you are the center of attention that might be a sign that you're a hero and there's nothing wrong with that there's absolutely nothing wrong with that you might be a hero if you talk a lot. Now, I know that that might be me projecting a hopeful desire to be a hero, because I like talking. <laughs> you may or may not have noticed. The idea about talking in a gaming session. We are playing a game that our hobby is based around talking. Yes, I know you can do play by email and play by post where it isn't talking, it's typing. But the idea is still the same. If you only type one sentence as opposed to four paragraphs, or if you only say one sentence as opposed to asking questions, talking, engaging, etc., etc., well, that's the same difference, isn't it? A hero is someone who talks and asks questions. Richard Branson, one of our more successful business people on the planet, has always said that the best way to ensure success is to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you are. And then you talk to them a lot. I like to always engage my DM to ask them, hey, is this what I'm, am I, am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? Is there more from this? Is there more from that? Talking, 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 talking is absolutely vital if you are a hero. And I know we love the strong, silent hero type. I am Batman who don't talk a lot. I'm not talking about that kind of talking. I am talking about you at the table being open and honest about what your character is trying to do, what your character is thinking, how your character engages with other characters, even saying, my character notices that Ethwin is looking a little bit down, and so I go over to her and just put an arm over her shoulder whilst we're having a rest period in the canteen, and just give her a hug. There's no dialogue there. You're still a strong, silent type, if that's the hero that you're trying to play in the game, but you yourself as a player have just become a hero in my books. Why? 
because you're talking, you are grabbing attention, but you're doing something else, which we're going to look at in a little bit, by involving Ethwin in that entire scene. So there's lots of talking if you're a hero. Decision making. Now you're going to see that this comes up time and time again. Even in traditional literature and script writing, we identify as the, if you work in the industry, we identify the hero of the story by the one who makes the decisions. Now, if they are not making decisions, if they are purely reacting throughout the entire film, they're not a hero. They are simply someone that we are following. A hero, by definition, is the one who makes the decisions and lives with the consequences of those decisions. So if you are a player who likes to make decisions but then owns up and admits to the mistakes, tries to correct their errors, tries to work with their fellow party members by talking and by making sure that the attention is there, if you are doing all of that, then you are probably a hero. Decision making doesn't come easily to a lot of people, and I know of several people who hate making decisions. And so I, as someone who will make a rash, rash decision without even thinking about it, I like to goad and torment people who don't like making decisions by just throwing all the decisions at them. Sometimes it can become very frustrating for both parties. I'm waiting for a decision to be made and they hate making decisions and don't want to make a decision in case they make the wrong one, in case they make the one that I'm not happy with. There's a whole lot of reasons why people don't like making decisions. All of that comes to the fore at the table. So a hero from a player perspective is the player who is willing to say, we are going into that tower. We are going to board that starship. We are going to investigate the strange tentacle under the door. That is the hero player. That is the player who is making a decision, the decision maker. That's not to say every decision is made by the hero, by the way. Remember, it's lots of talking and center of attention. Center of attention means you have got the attention of the others. If you don't have the attention of the others, you're not a hero. You're just a loud, noisy thing in the corner that no one cares about. Be warned, there is a difference. I have seen so many players who are all me, 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 and they don't understand why everybody else at the table is like, okay, so we're carrying on ignoring idiot in the corner who's going me, 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 me. Center of attention, when combined with talking and decision-making, means it's a process. I'm at the center of everyone's attention because I have grabbed everyone's attention by engaging them through dialogue and through asking them questions. They might not want to make a decision, but there is nothing stopping those player characters from informing you as a hero about their thinking, about their desires, about their motivations. All right, we need to decide, are we going to board the starship? Let me ask you, I know you want to make a decision, but would you prefer to board the starship or would you prefer to explore it first? Is there some other alternative that I've missed that you can think of that we could look into doing? Get your feedback. Next player character, right? Let's get all of that. Let's combine it together. This is what I think we should make. So the hero is the center of attention. They're doing all the talking and then they're making a decision. Okay, I think we should board the starship based on what you're all saying. We've run out of options. This seems to be our, our course of action. And then enacting that. There is a difference, bearing in mind, there is a difference between a decision maker and somebody who just jumps. A decision maker means that they have weighed up various options and then have made, have made a decision based on that. They haven't just gone, oh, uh, this is a situation, I stab it. That is an impulse, it's not a decision. You might decide, oh, I'm gonna stab it, but there's been no rationale behind it. There's been no talking up behind it, and there's been no engagement with your fellow players about it. So that means you're not a hero. You're just the idiot who Leroy Jenkins the entire situation. That's not a good thing, by the way. The pros. What are the pros of being a hero? What, is the, what are the good things about being a hero? Well, you're supportive. That's a surprise. The hero is supportive. Shouldn't the hero be leading? Sure by supporting. By engaging with your fellow players, as I have said before, you can support the action. So yes, you are center of attention, but you are supporting everybody else. Oh, we're in combat? If I'm a true hero, I'm not going to be at the front ignoring everybody else around me. 
I'm going to be making sure that everybody else around me is doing and is engaged and is safe whilst I do my thing. If you are a player and you are a hero, you are making sure that the other player's characters are involved and engaged and that your character is engaged with them. Remember, if we go back to the signs of being a hero, it's about talking and engaging and being the center of attention by helping others. So you can do that. And certainly in terms of information, because you're the one doing all the talking, because you're the one who's making the decisions, you're gathering all the information together. So a good hero is somebody who is well-informed. You can only be well-informed if you ask your fellow player characters what's going on, what do they know, what information do they have. It's important that you do that. That's, again, the mark of a hero. You let others shine. You allow others to shine by assigning them tasks. Go do this. Go do that. Can you help me here? Can you help me here? Your center of attention, can you help me? You are the librarian. I am not. I can't go into that library and get that information, but you could. Could you go into the library and do that? So I have passed it over to you, my fellow player, who can now shine. They can go and do the research in the library. We know they've got the skills to do that. Whilst my character now sits back and relaxes in the cantina. I'm certainly not shining, but it was my heroic decision. And I say that uh, with the utmost modesty. It was my heroic decision to pass the torch to somebody else to let them shine for a little bit. I don't have to shine all the time. Just remember, it was me who sent you there in the first place. So, nonetheless, you also are going to be progressing the plot because you're gathering all the information, because you're making decisions based off of the information that you've gathered, because you're asking your fellow players and their characters what they think and what should happen and what should what should be done. You're moving the plot forward. You're pushing the plot forward. You are absolutely pushing the plot forward. No doubt about it. You are driving that. Uh, because, because uh, as I'm saying this, I'm, I'm busy thinking of a situation where I had a player who was doing this. We were playing uh, in, in, in a rather complicated game. There was lots of politics and research and that kind of stuff going on. The party split five ways, but the hero player at the table had made sure that each of the party members had something to do to go and get. There wasn't just a, oh, you're just going off on your own? Fine. There was, I, I know you're going off. What, what, are you, what are you looking for specifically? Okay, could you also do this? Five players went off, five player characters. Five player characters came back. And the hero player tied together all of the pieces that they had discovered individually and then shared it out with the rest of the group. It was an absolutely amazing experience. And then they made a decision based on that, which was far stronger than just blindly running into the castle or whatever the situation might be. The negatives, however, the negatives, the bad things, there are many bad things. The bad things about being a hero, you can sometimes be bossy. Oh, um, right, we've arrived at the starport. I want you to go to the registrar's office and see you can crack into those codes, get those codes for us. I want you to go over to the merchant's space and see if you can buy us some better armour and look out for some rumours there. I want you to go to the tavern, and whilst you're at the tavern, I need you to please just listen for rumours, and I'm going to go and do this uh, thing with the princess because I'm glorious. There's a difference between being talkative, the center of attention, and decision making and giving orders. Orders are bad. Orders are negative. Orders are not what your fellow players are there for, unless it's a particular type of game that you're playing. Generally speaking, it's about, well, what were you thinking of doing? Oh, you were going to go to the tavern. Do you think while you're there, you could listen for rumors? Exactly the same outcome just delivered in a different way. And suddenly you have become, you're the center of attention because everyone's listening to you. You are talking and you are decision making. Well, could you listen for rumors? Oh yeah, sure, I could listen for rumors. And then they're off they go. Happily, as opposed to those that were ordered to go and do things by this bossy boots that came out of nowhere. Hero players, because they are the heroes, can also be loudmouthed. They like talking, so they talk a lot, and they can talk over those who are not accustomed to talking a lot. So hero characters need to learn when to shut up. Hero players, I should say. Hero characters are a whole different story. Hero players need to learn when to shut up and let their other players talk. 
It does require you to sometimes sit back and just not prompt, just not say anything, especially if your character's not there. You just sit quietly and let your turn happen when you can then try and act upon what has happened. Being a loudmouth is something that people who like talking can fall into. If you are someone like that, learn to bite your teeth together and smile, smile, smile. It will allow others to make decisions and make mistakes, and afterwards you can chat to them, not, oh, well, of course you made this mistake and I would have done it different there. Well, that's just being an ass. You don't want to be an ass. No, it's about talking to them and saying, okay, well, you made that decision. Um, it's a pity your character didn't chat to mine first because I could have told your character this. I don't know if it would have helped at all, but I think you might have then had a better choice to make type of thing. You can help guide. That's a true hero player. You can also develop a god complex. It becomes fairly obvious in a role-playing situation when you have a hero player. The hero player starts to become the GM's favourite. Not by choice, the GM might like somebody else, but because your character is the centre of attention, because your character is the one that's engaging with the PCs the most, the GM is naturally going to start to give your character more information, uh, make situations for your character where there needs to be plot exposition and things like that, because they know that your your character is going to engage as opposed to somebody else's character who's not going to engage. Oh, I've got an NPC who needs to tell them very quickly the coordinates of the Star Destroyer. Um, if I send them over to her, she's not going to engage. If I send them over to him, he's not going to engage. If I send them over to they, they're going to engage. Okay, right, yes, sending them to the hero player because the hero player will actually ask questions and get useful information out of the NPC. That is a valuable space to be in. But you can also then get a little bit of a god, god complex. Oh, the GM's not going to kill my character. My character's the whole plot's based on my character. They can't kill my character. My character's freaking immortal. I've got plot armor for days. I'm the best player at the table. I'm the hero of heaven's sake. You're going to kill a hero off. There is a chance that you get this complex in your head as a hero player. Do not do it. Don't walk down that path because you will soon find yourself the player of a game of one and that's just you. Everyone else has gone, aha, you are no longer being a hero, you're now just being a dick. You can also become exclusionary. Hmm. This player kind of does what I like because they kind of do what I ask them to do. That player does not do what I ask them to do, does not ask questions, does not even try and get information. You know what? I'm just going to stop talking to them because they're a boring player. I'm going to just engage with those two players. You two are my favourite players. Yeah, you're my pet players and I'm the hero. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm brilliant. I'm brilliant. See that god complex creeping in there? It can be careful. But excluding other players simply because they are quiet or they're not so proactive is equally bad. You have to avoid that like the plague. You need to include everybody if you are a true hero. Heroes don't have favourites, so they say. But even if you do have favourites, make sure that your unfavourites or your not so favourites or your, oh gods, make sure that they have something to do because otherwise you're not being a hero. You're just being a human being and we don't want that. We're talking about heroes. Heroes are champions. They're things that we aspire to be. So are you a hero? Really? Do you include others? Do you make sure that everybody's got bits and bobs to do? Do you make sure that there is a sense that everybody is involved and that you are listening to their ideas and their options? You're just not, not just making unilateral decisions. You're, you're actually actually paying attention. If you are, that's brilliant. Make sure you don't fall into the traps because then you won't be for very long. It's a fine line to tread as a hero. Life is tough, but that's what makes you a hero as opposed to something else. Well, if you think you're a hero, let us know down below. And if you think that I have miscategorized a hero, perhaps you think there's something that's missing, a fundamental core po component that uh, heroes should also have, leave it down below. Let's start that discussion. Let's start that engagement. It would be interesting to see. Now, I have something important to announce for those of you that have stayed until the end of the video. Our Discord channel has just been partnered with Discord, so now you can easily find us at discord.gg forward slash forward, forward slash great GM. 
uh, join us there where we have tons of conversations like around this kind of stuff. It's absolutely fabulous, absolutely awesome, and we would love to have you there. Until next time, however, I wish you and yours the very happiest of playing. Oh, must I? I mean, I don't even like the song. Okay, all right, fine, fine. Ugh. Uh, where were we? Oh yes, somewhere after midnight in my wildest fantasy, somewhere just beyond my reach, there's someone reaching back for me. Oh, I can't subscribe to this. I this is this is trash. This is some some bint trying to get a man to come and racing on thunder and rising with the heat. Oh crikey, it's gonna take a Superman to wipe me off my feet, swipe me, whatever. I need a hero, I'm, why can't she liberate herself? Why can't she grab that little goblin bell and you know, ding, 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 actually, I'm my own hero, I don't need a man, I can go off and do my own thing. Thank you for playing, goodbye. Man, you took too long, I, I'm my own woman. I am. 